to you, but before I do, I want to share a few other things with you. My family and I have been coming to Lafette First for over three years now, and before we started visiting churches, we had sat down as a family and just discussed our mission and our vision for serving the Lord. We had only been here, I think, one or two Sundays, and Derek announced the vision team and the plans to serve the Lord, not just in our church, but outside the church in Lafette and beyond. And we didn't want to miss out on any opportunity to serve. And since then, we've had so many opportunities to serve the Lord in our community and our church. I pray that if you haven't found a place to plug in, I pray that you find that so you can serve the Lord along with us. Currently, we are involved with the youth. And let me just tell you what a blessing that, um, that our youth are. They are. They're just a great group of kids and they bless my heart each week to be able to go and spend time with them. I think we can all agree that they are growing up in a very different world than maybe we did. And, you know, they need love, they need encouragement, they need someone pointing them to Jesus. And I feel like our church does a great job on that. So um, if you ever wanna hang out on some Wednesday nights, come on over. I would like to read scripture. Exodus 18, 13 to 20 through 27. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you're doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge, while all these people stand around you from morning to evening? Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who have come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you, and you cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice, and may God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear the Lord, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases, they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter, because they will share it with you. If you do this, and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain, and all these people will go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, they served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided themselves. Then Moses sent his father-in-law on his way, and Jethro returned to his own country. This is the word of the Lord. All right. What are y'all laughing at? Um, I did a lot of backpacking as a younger man, and uh, I enjoy doing that. It's been hard with, with kids. We haven't done it as much, well, at all. I'd love to do it more. And so, you know, I, I got to get some practice in. It's been a while. I need to figure out, you know, what it's like to carry a load for a while. And so, um, you know, if you have kids, you realize and understand that all the time, most of the time, you end up carrying their stuff, so I figure I'd get some practice at that, too. I've got their backpacks on here, and, uh, and really, we're all on a journey and that we need to be preparing for, and so I'm going to talk today, and today is Family Worship Day. I, I got something, I, a video I want you to watch in just a second, but I want to, since I came out with this, I have to explain some things, okay? We, we feel compelled uh, at least four times a year, three or four times a year, 
to do a family worship day. Why do we do that? Well, you want to help our kids to understand what it's like to worship together. That's why we have them stay in service until the songs are over. We're trying to teach them. Did you know that uh, somewhere between 60 and 80% of kids when they turn 18 leave the church and don't return until they're 30 and have their own kids? Part of that, I think, is that we've kept them out of church, big church, uh, more than we should. We need to help them and teach them. So every so often we're going to do a family worship day where, sorry adults, the kids are the main audience today, okay? So, but but I, I pray that the profound truths of God's word would touch all of our hearts and help us all to see how important it is to follow him on this journey. Now, this was the thing I was supposed to do first, but I thought I need to explain what family worship day is. We have something that's beginning next week called Belong. And uh, Belong is an opportunity for you to learn more about our church, learn more about what it means to be a part of a church. Um, the understanding that's biblical is being a member of the church, and that is not like the member of a country club. It's the member of uh, a, a team or a, a body where everybody has their own part in the thing they're doing. That's what we've been talking about this whole month. So we're launching Belong next week at 10 a.m. in the choir room, which is just right out this door. If you're going to the men's restroom, just keep going straight. You'll run right into it. And ladies, if you've never been to the men's restroom, just turn left. It's the first left there, okay? So we'd love for you to be a part of Belong, but I, I can tell you until I'm blue in the face, and if I keep wearing this bag, I'm probably going to be blue in the face before this is over. But uh, I had, I've asked some friends who recently went through Belong to share with you what that's about. So would you watch this video real quick? Hi, I'm Crystal Domzik. Uh, my family moved here from Watertown, New York uh, back in August. Hey, we're the Anglins and we've been coming for quite a while now and First Baptist feels like our home. Uh, ended up hearing a lot of re references to um, First Baptist in Lafayette, so I decided to try it out. Um, came to a couple of services. Everybody was super friendly, um, right from coming through the front door all the way up through service. People that I didn't know stopped and wanted to know my story even after service when I was, you know, a brand new face. It was a really warm, welcoming experience. This morning on our way to church, we were going down the driveway and Weston, our five-year-old, said, Mommy, I just really like going to church. And you know, as a parent, to hear that your child is going to church and isn't like, oh, we gotta go to church. Looks forward to going to church on Sundays is, you know, that, that's a good feeling. I decided that I wanted to become a member. Um, and at that point, I had found out about the new member classes that they were offering. So I decided to go ahead and sit in on a couple and um, see what membership was all about here. And it was a really um, good process to go through, uh, even down to figuring out what our uh, fruit of the spirit is and our talents and our gifts, um, things that I've never really explored in additional churches. Um, just help me connect a little bit more with where the Lord might be leading me to serve. I enjoyed the Belong class because it's, you know, it was, it's like an icebreaker. It can come and sit on the pew and you're just like, I really don't know what, what to do. And it's like, okay, here's a belong class I can go to. And, and you know, it's, it's getting your foot in the door. It's breaking the ice. You know, if you have questions like, I don't really know how to join. I want to join. I don't like to sit on the pew. But I want to do something. What do I do? Okay, let's go to the belong class and figure it out. We met people that we didn't know before, also in the belong class, who we've really enjoyed getting to know. I always make sure I wave at them special because you feel like part of, you know, your own little group that you met in your belong class. And, um, you know, it really did make you feel like it got you started with getting involved with the church. We did a gift, like a spiritual gift, um, guideline that kind of helped you to know where you might fit in best to help. It's been a great experience and I'd say if the Lord is really leading you and the Lord is talking to you and, and this is where you want to be, I would definitely jump into the new membership kind of classes um, and just see where God plugs you in from there.
much better than I did. And so if you're interested in that, you can let us know. You can sign up online or on our church app, or you can just come next week, and that would be fine too. Love to have you. So we've been learning for, for the past four weeks how to be a part and how it's important that each and every one of us are a part uh, and how each part of this body, every member of this body matters. Each of us has a specific, a specific gift with which God has equipped us. God has intentionally arranged us as he intended in this body and he has done that on purpose for a purpose. Each gift is vital, vital. Each person, vital, important for the job that we have ahead of us. And so we've seen that everyone is a part of a local church, who, who, it is, who is a part of a local church, is equipped by God with a gift that God wants to use. God wants to use it. I love what Corey said in that. He says, I want to do something. Well, we want you to do something too, and we want you to do something that God has equipped you to do and given you the, the strength to do and the, the gift to do. And Jesus has arranged all these just as you want. He's put you here specifically to do something that only you can do. So today we're going to look at how each one can be appointed and help carry the load. It's one thing to say that you're equipped and arranged, but eventually we've got to get down to the nitty-gritty and get you serving according to that gift, according to how God has arranged you and gifted you and equipped you. Now, that's harder to do. It's very easy to say, well, this is how it's done. It's, tell you, it's easy to tell you what Scripture says, but there's some work that has to be done. There's some work that needs to be done to help you find those things. The first two things, equipped and arranged, God does most of the work. Ephesians 4 says that it's a job of the leaderships to equip uh, leadership members to equip the church. But now we see there's a job to do, and we all have to do it. So, we're going to look at the Old Testament today. And back in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, Moses is leading all the folks who made it out of Egypt. You know, some estimate that that could have been around 2 million people. And in Exodus 18, we find Moses by himself, on his own, solely and only doing all the ministry work for all of those people. The Bible says that he is sitting from the very first moment of light to the very last moment of light in the day, judging the people, sitting with them, helping them to know God, helping them to understand who he is and what he, they need to do. And Moses is doing that all by himself. All, they would all come to him. Now, his father-in-law comes up, and like all good father-in-laws, right, imparts some wisdom. He sees him doing this. He comes into town and gives him some wisdom. So let's look at the wisdom and discover three things that tie in to the load of ministry a church carries. The first thing we see is ministry involves helping people to know God. Moses is just trying to do what God told him to do. He's sitting with these men and women, boys and girls, millions of them, most likely, and he's helping them from the, from the very, first, very first moment of light to the very last moment of light. He's sitting with them day in, day out, helping them to know who God is, know what God has said to do, and know how to do it. Jethro walks up on this, and he says, are you outside of your mind? Moses, you're going to kill yourself. Moses, you gotta, you've got to help get some help here. Look at what he says in verse 15 and 16. Moses replied to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. So Jethro's like, what are you doing? Moses says, I've got to tell them about God. It's my job. Whenever I, they have a dispute, it, it comes to me, and I make the decision between one man and another. I teach them God's statutes and laws. I teach them God's way. Now, let's first realize that Moses was doing something very, very important and very, very good. He was helping people to know God and his ways. He told Jethro that 
And he told Jethro that. Who Jethro, you know, Jethro was not a God-fearing man necessarily. Jethro saw him teaching in all of, his, all of Israel. Now, do you think one man can teach all these people? Like if you walked up on that and understood that, right? We understand. That's more than work for one person to do. Boys and girls, could you imagine if there was only one teacher at your school? What if there was one teacher to teach all 300, 400, 500 kids? That'd be chaos, wouldn't it? You can just nod or say yes or just ignore me if you want to, but, you know, you'll have to answer to the Lord. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. So how would someone help teach everyone about God and his ways? How could someone help? What we see, the second thing, is that ministry can be a heavy load. Ministry can be a heavy load. Look at what verse 17 and 18 say. This is, this is what Jethro says to him. What you are doing is not good. I love that. It's just real simple. What you're doing, it ain't good. You're not, that's not a good thing. He said to him, you will certainly wear out both yourself and these people who are with you because the task is too heavy for you. Say, too heavy. Yeah. All right, yes, you can participate, right? It's a family worship day. Here we go. It's too heavy. He ministry can be a heavy load. Jethro knew this wasn't a good idea. He knew it was too heavy, a load for one man to carry. Even if Moses was following God's command and doing something good and doing what God wanted him to do, it was more than he could do on his own. Everything uh, God intends our church to do cannot be done by one person. And I think you know that. Or even just a few dedicated people. You've heard the old adage, 80% uh, of the work gets done by how many percent of the people? 20, yeah. In a lot of churches, that's the case. But even that is not how it's meant to be, not how it's supposed to be. So much more can be done if more people help. And we are all a vital part of helping to carry the heavy load. So I need some help carrying my heavy load. I've got some friends that Miss Jordan already asked to come up. Would you come up now? Miss Jordan said, come on up. Would you come up and help me, please? Come on, come on, don't be shy. Come on, come on up. All right. Thank you. Come on up. Come all the way to the stage. Come on up. Thank you very much. All right. I need some help here. Can y'all help me uh, grab some of these bags? I think you just have to unclip something or un-Velcro something. So grab. There should be four bags. Can you please grab those and help me carry that load? You might want to put the bag on. There you go. There we go. Good job. Oh, my goodness. Do you know how much lighter that feels already? Will you give my friends a hand? They're doing a great job. You can put those on so you don't have to carry them with your hands and put them on your backs. There we go. So you're going to stand here with me for just a minute because you're not done just yet. All right, stand here. That way they don't have to just look at me. They can look at y'all. All right? <clears throat> the third thing that we, that we see is that ministry is better when we share the load. When we share the load. Look at verses 19 through 23. This is, most, this is Jethro's um, wisdom. Now listen to me. I will give you some advice, and God be with you. You be the one to represent the people before God. So he's saying, don't shirk your responsibility. Your responsibility doesn't change. You're still the leader. God is still giving you a job to do. But he says, instruct, uh, but he says... Uh, you be the one to represent the people for God and bring their cases to him. Instruct them about the statutes and laws and teach them the way to live and what they must do. But you should select from all the people able men, God-fearing, trustworthy, and hating dishonest prophet. Place them over people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They should judge the people at all times. Then they can bring you every major case but judge every minor case themselves. And this way you will lighten your load and they will bear it with you. <clears throat> you see, 
Number one, it's probably a good idea if your father-in-law or someone who is a respected leader, is, and they say, listen to me, what is it probably a good idea to do? Listen, right? Listen. Listen to what they say. I love that Jethro's like, listen to me. And Moses hears him. It's good, it's good wisdom. It's good advice. Now, he says, let some others carry your heavy load, Moses. You do what God has called you to do, but find others to do what God called them to do. Now, um, we have these backpacks that the, these kids are carrying. They're helping me carry my load now. And my load is lighter. And is any of y'all's load too heavy? No? That's pretty easy, right? It's not too bad. So it's important that we all join in and help carry the load, what? Of ministry, of sharing the message of God. And we can get to the destination with less strain on our backs and we're able to accomplish the same amount of work probably even more. Now, listen, can you take off your backpacks and I want you to look and see what's in there. I want you to show everyone what's in your backpack because this is the load we all carry. So I want you to pull just one of those out. All right, and what are those? Can somebody tell me what's in there? What is, in the, what is that? A Bible. a Bible, yeah, a Bible. Because we all carry that load. It is, our, it is all of our jobs to carry the word of God and the love of Jesus Christ, not only to each other, but to the world. And you and I need to shoulder that load of responsibility together. All right, thank you so much. Can y'all give them a hand? They did an awesome job. Thank you, thank you. Good job. Thank you. All right. I'm going to take mine off too. All right. Doesn't mean we're not carrying the load anymore. It just means we're ending the illustration. So what can you do? What can we do? This is simple. <clears throat> it's simple to do. Find ways to serve. Find ways to help carry the load of ministry here. Ways that are according to your gifts. Ways that uh, use the strengths, the talents, the abilities that God has given you. He didn't give those to you to be wasted or to be unused or to be used for yourself. He gave those so you could use them for Him and for His glory. Let me give you some specific ways you can help. Easter is coming. Easter is coming. You can be an outreach arm of our church. Did you know that 81% of people will go to church if they are invited by someone they know? 81%. We always think, oh, well, no one would go if I invited them. Well, I, you know, well, I don't want to put myself out there. I don't want to be rejected. Literally, the statistics show 81% of people would come. What better day than Easter to celebrate and understand what Jesus did for them, his love that went the greatest lengths to show them that he loves them. And so you can invite someone to Easter. We'll have very soon some invitation cards that we'd love to hand out to you, give you an opportunity to invite some folks to be a part of our Easter services. You don't have to wait till Easter, just so you know, but we are going to use Easter as a moment of leverage for that. With Easter, we always need extra first impressions, people. That's easy. All you got to do is smile and say, go this way. And we'll train you where to tell them to go. There's easy things like that, and then there's bigger things. You know, we love to add more connect groups, more Sunday school classes. We'd love to do that. What we need are people who are willing to lead them. Maybe that's a gift God has given you. We gave out, and they're still in the lobby here on the, if you leave, they're on the welcome desk. 
those shape profiles, the very one that uh, Anna mentioned in the video. We have them for all of you. It's not hard. Pick one up. If you need any help going through it, you can call me personally. But it's not very difficult. It just says, hey, what are some of your top three potential spiritual gifts? What are some of the top three things you're passionate about? What are some of the top three uh, things that you are interested in? It even gives you a very simple thing that you can circle at the bottom and say, hey, I think I'd like to be a part of the outreach ministry or the, the first impressions ministry or the worship ministry or the assimilation, discipleship, care, next gen. You can just circle that if all, all that is and just turn it right back in. We're going to have a digital option available this week as well that we'll send out. We encourage you to do that so you can discover how has God equipped you and how can God use you that it will bring you joy and excitement to help carry the load. And we'd love to share with you how to do that. Another thing is that we all have a job to do. This is something we really want to work on. Our assimilation team has worked on this. We want to be... I love Crystal's... I love her uh, experience and what she said about how welcome she felt. We want to make sure that we continue to be that type of church for anyone entering our doors. And we're going to start something called a 10-foot rule. And the 10-foot rule is that if you find somebody that you don't know on a Sunday morning within 10 feet of you, that you'd go and just speak to them, say hello. Listen, you may, yeah, you know, I've heard the thing, well, what if they're a member and I don't know who they are? It's okay. You play dumb, it's all right. You just say, I haven't had the chance to meet you today or yet. Tell me your name. Simple as that. And people are always willing and ready to tell you their name. And so we need everyone to do that. That's a job for all of us. We all have a job to shoulder the weight of ministry to help others to know Jesus. So let us know the things you're equipped in. Maybe you just need to come and say, I know what I need. I don't even need to fill that paper out. This is what God has called me to do. I've had someone do that recently with me and say, hey, I might be called to this ministry. Do we already have one or can I start it? Man. You want to know something that it gets a pastor excited? People saying, hey, I want to start a ministry that's going to help people know Jesus. You better believe we're going to make it happen. We're going to try to make it happen with all our might. Come and help shoulder the weight. Be a part of what God has called us to do. And I want to help you do that in any way I can. Can we just take a moment and just say today, make a declaration. God, we want to serve you and be the church you've called us to do, be and do what you've called us to do so that other people can know you, so that we can carry the message of Jesus and that we can shoulder it together for our community. I pray that God will work in your heart. If you need to make a decision, you come today. If you need to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you come. I'd love to share with you how to trust him and follow him today. Maybe you just need to come and worship him today at the altar. If that's you, do as God has called you to do. We're going to sing a song that says just that. Come to the altar. His arms are open wide. Let's pray and let's sing. God, we love you. We thank you, God. And we pray that you would work in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stand and let's sing.